from Craft Me A Card, and I love crafting for the crafter, and that is you. So today I decided to share with you a Wacky Wednesday. For all the new subscribers, a Wacky Wednesday is usually when I create something for you different than a card. So in this case, I'm going to be creating a tag. I do want to share this is my first tag ever. I've never created a tag. And this is going to be a Julie Nutting tag that is going to be sent to Emily from Jersey Girl that loves Julie Nutting. So she has created a challenge for us to create a tag using an image of Julie Nutting. If you don't have Julie Nutting, you could create it with any girl image. And as I was blabbering off here, I was showing you everything that I had planned to use. And um, one of the items is photo glossy paper. Yes, lately I've been going through a crazy phase of using oxide inks on photo glossy paper. So this tag is going to include a little bit of that technique. So I just go ahead and I cut my base out of photo glossy paper and I just use a slim line die for this. And I found this brush that my dad used to use to dye his beard. You know us crafters, if we see anything that is remotely close to anything we could use for crafting, we grab it and run. <laughs> so he was throwing these brushes away, so I decided to keep a few. And I'm glad I did because I've used them for, for many, <laughs> many projects actually. Okay, so I grabbed some peacock feathers oxide distress ink and I smush it against my work surface here and what I'm using this plastic that you see on top of my mat is um, is one of those plastic placemats that I got at the Dollar Tree I have gotten into the habit of placing them when I craft because it just helps keep my work surface a little cleaner so with this brush I grabbed some ink that I applied some water onto it just to help the color move and I go ahead and I put it on top of my photo glossy paper just to give it that look of a brush that has painted a stroke. Okay, so once I am content with that, I go ahead and I grab a dropper and I grab some of this ink off my surface and I create a little dripping effect just a little bit to mimic that, you know, the paint has run down as paint usually does. And just to make the piece a little more artistic, I go ahead and I splat it with uh, some of this same Distress Oxide ink. <laughs> then I clean out the excess and be careful when doing this because when the ink hits the photo glossy paper, it picks it up immediately. Um, exactly how the first drop of color goes onto this paper, that's where it's going to stay. So be careful when picking it up. So here I am adding another stroke of this brush <laughs> that I'm going to be die cutting. And this is in uh, picked raspberry. That's the color also that is an oxide ink. And again, I add the dripping of the paint. Decided to make this a little hotter, a little pinker. <laughs> so just added different layers. And to cut out my brush, I'm going to use this coffee paper that I always try to have on hand. And I'll link up the video where I create this paper. So I go ahead and I die cut my brush and out of this other paper that is wood looking I go ahead and I do the bristles. And of course like I said nothing goes to waste with crafters. I have this Puffs tissue box that had the metallic inside so I couldn't throw that away. No, no. <laughs> so I go ahead and I cut out, I die cut the little piece that is going to be holding the bristles onto the uh, brush. I don't know what that's called, but anyway, I start assembling my brush and I'm just using regular glue. And I also glue the little piece that I cut out of that metallic cardboard. And I got myself a brush. So looking at my brush, I decided to create the feeling of the brush actually being dipped into the paint. So I needed something a little more shiny. And of course, I thought of using the photo glossy paper. So I go ahead and I cut this same piece of the bristles out in photo glossy paper. Again, I bring in Peacock Feathers Oxide Ink, squish it onto my mat, add a little bit of water, mix the color around and I dip this uh, piece of bristles <laughs> into the color and ha ha <laughs> that's the effect I was going for that's what I was looking for it's just uh, these bristles were dipped in this color that is dripping on our tag <laughs> and after wiping it down you could see the shine that the paper still maintains even though we have oxide ink on it 
So just by grabbing some multimedia glue, because this is photo glossy paper, I go ahead and I stick this onto my brush. I cut another piece uh, in cardboard of the whole brush because I wanted this brush to be a little more sturdy. It was too flimsy just being cut on this um, coffee paper that I had created. So I cut a piece of cardboard and I stick it onto it just to make it a little thicker. All right, now I bring on my little girl, my little Julie Nutting image here, and I stamp her using some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And I'm stamping her on some um, tan colored cardstock, and this is just regular cardstock, not too thick. It's not watercolor paper or anything like that. I stamp her twice to give me some room for error. Because I'm not perfect. I will be coloring her in using some Oxide Distress inks. And just by taking the ink pad and smushing it onto my work surface and adding a little bit of water, I use some black soot and some broken china. I go ahead and I dilute these colors uh, to make them that watercolory look. There are many ways to achieve a watercolor look. You could use watercolor pencils, you could use watercolor markers, you could use distress ink and, in this case, distress oxide inks. Um, I like the look that it gives. I decided to color her in with broken china because I love that minty color, minty teal color. And, uh, and I don't know, I always envision a bonnet being black on a painter, <laughs> but I wanted to incorporate some colors, so I added a little bit of that broken china to give it that little teal feel. And I go ahead and I bring some brown for her face, her hair, some sponge sugar for her little touches of pink here and there on her, and I was quite content with her. I like to bring in some uh, bling, some pizzazz, so I add a little bit of crystal stickles to her bonnet to her little pocket there and her shoes and for some white on her outfit and little highlights here and there I go ahead and I use the jelly roll pen because oxide ink was used it oxidized <laughs> a little bit of my black lines on her so just with the regular marker I go ahead and just go over the edges to define the borders so I later discovered that there was an actual piece of the um, paint that is being dipped into the brush there's a little piece that you can die cut so I go ahead and I die cut it and I color it heavily with this peacock feathers then with some multimedia glue because this is photo paper I go ahead and I adhere it to the bottom little piece there of my uh, brush great little touch Alrighty, time for stenciling I don't do enough of this because it is so fun I just bring in some white texture paste by Ranger go ahead and I smush more of that broken china and I color this texture paste and I use my stencil and I add little splats here and there. And I decide to also use some pink, some pink raspberries to add, you know, a little bit of variation. And I had a lot of this paste left over, so I decided to um, mix the two and create some purple. Why not? And I splatted that here and there as well using the stencil. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I added this purple because I gave it another uh, nice color to look at. Alrighty, so I fussy cut my little girl out, just going with some little small scissors and going around the edges of her. And then with a crafter's knife, I decided to cut the little pieces that couldn't be reached with the uh, scissors. Since the tag was photo paper, I decided to cut another piece uh, of the same tag but in cardboard just to stick in back of the tag so that it wouldn't be so flimsy to give it sturdiness. I heat up my glue gun and I add a strip of this fun trim that I got at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you guys remember it uh, when I hauled it, but uh, I knew it would come in handy. <laughs> it's a super cute fun trim so it went well with the colors that I chose to use for this tag and don't forget to burn off the edges to avoid any fraying now alrighty I knew I wanted an edge so I got this uh, trim that I think I also got at Hobby Lobby and I thought it was a perfect color to go around the tag so I go ahead and again I just flip the tag over and I add the trim all the way around using silicone glue the uh, heat gun on the front of the tag I decided to add this pretty little um, like little flowers with this hot pink 
So also using the heat gun, I go ahead and I add each one of these little flowers onto the edge of the tag. And I'm glad I added these little flowers. It just gave it a nice little touch of girliness. <laughs> Next, I decided to adhere the brush, also using my uh, heat gun here, adding some silicone to the back and just placing it right where that stroke is at, just to make it seem, you know, make it look like if that brush had created that turquoise stroke there. Next, using some foam adhesive so that the girl can have some dimension, I go ahead and I glue her down on the tag right next to the brush. Using this stitched metal die, I go ahead and I cut out some white cardstock. This is going to be for my sentiment. Next, I pull out the Misty and I grab this stamp that says Eat, Craft, Repeat. <laughs> Yay! Um, I go ahead and I decide to heat emboss it using some black embossing powder. Before heat embossing, always remember to go over your piece of paper with some anti-static powder tool and use an ink that will stay wet long enough for the embossing powder to grab onto it and give you enough time for you to heat it up with your heat tool. Once my tag is nice and done, I notice that the R doesn't have any embossing powder on it. So I just go ahead and I dab it again with some anti-static powder and I grab my dry marker. This is an embossing pen that dried up on me, but I dip it into the Versamark ink and it grabs enough ink to help me correct those spots that the embossing powder didn't grab onto. So I just go ahead and dip it back into the embossing powder, heat it up with my tool, and voila, problem solved. I get a nice little looking sentiment there. So to decorate this tag a little bit, I put in two brads, one on each side, the yellow ones there, and then I added some foam tape to the back so it could be lifted up a little. And I go ahead and I add some multimedia glue to the back of these foam adhesives just for security. And I add it onto the tag, just like that. Okay, so now I have to make this tag into a tag, right? So I need to add some little stringies. Um, so I just measure out to where the middle of the tag is so I could punch a hole in it. Using my crop die, which is like a heavy duty hole puncher, it has two sizes. I use the biggest size and I add a metal eyelet to the center of my tag. So I forgot to record, so I wanted to show you here with this extra tag how it works. You punch a hole and then they sell these metal eyelets. You could find them at most craft stores. And you just put one of these eyelets inside the hole that you punched. And the crop dial has a different function that allows you to press this metal into place. And this is just something fun and clean you could add to actually any project. Okay, so once I did that to the tag, it's time to add the ribbon. So I decided to use this pink and green ribbon that I've had for eons. I thought that this would be perfect for this tag. And in addition, I decided to add this mint colored ribbon. I really like the combination of these two to balance out the colors. So I wanted to add some gems because I see that they add like these little strings of gems to these tags and it makes it look very pretty. So I wanted to add some and I had these beads that I think they're crystal because they're a little heavy. So I added these beads to a string, a metal string, and I don't know how they run it through some of these ribbons because I could not for the life of me run ribbon through these beads. So I ended up grabbing a piece of metal wire, the wire that you find on the edges of ribbon. So I went ahead and I grabbed some of that and I ran that through my eyelet and uh, I added the beads to this. And at the very end of it, I wanted something cute. So the same ribbon that I used at the bottom of the tag, I went ahead and I cut a little piece. Don't forget to burn the edges to avoid any fraying. And I added some hot glue and I just ran it around and around the very tip of these, uh, of these beads. And I made sure to cut the metal string really close to the trunk <laughs> so that um, it wouldn't poke anybody. And I also went ahead and I added a second layer of this trim so that it could be poofier. <laughs>
I decided to add sequin here and there just to decorate it a little bit more. And with this metal corner die, I went ahead and with yellow, I cut out some corners. I resorted to use my glue gun again to stick these corners onto the ribbon. And finally, I decide to add a little bit of glossy accents to that tip of the paintbrush where there's supposed to be uh, paint. I just really wanted that wet feel, that dimensional look. <laughs> as realistic as possible, please. <laughs> and here it is how it looks as soon as you apply it. So I let it dry overnight. And this is what it looks like once it's dry. As you can see, it doesn't change much, does it? Ooh. Ah. I hope you've enjoyed what I had to share on this Wacky Wednesday. I hope you get inspired. I hope you create and be happy. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Be so kind to like and comment. And if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down button twice. <laughs> Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, it doesn't go through. It doesn't go through. Wah, wah, wah. Let's make it go through. Oh, not happening. There has to be a trick to this. This has to have a trick. Has to have a trick. Don't burn me. Don't burn me. Ow, ow, ow. Burnt. Told you not to burn me. <laughs>